Hello, Jen friends, and welcome to USCT Pension Files, a rich resource for African American genealogy, part two. I'm here today with my dear friend and colleague, Bernice Alexander Bennett. Hello, Bernice. Hello. And my name is Tony Carrier. I'm from the Center for Family History at the International African American Museum in Charleston, South Carolina. I hope you watched uh, Bernice's part one. In part one, she talked to you about USCG pension files. Um, she told you how rich they can be, how much detail they can reveal. And she also talked to you about the challenges that veterans faced when they were trying to prove their claims and how long some of these, uh, some of these application processes could go on. So here I'm going to talk to you about okay, we have the pension file, what are we going to do with this pension file? And what other information are we going to gather to give us more information for documenting our USCT veteran ancestor? First off, I'd like to say that everything that we're going to cover in this segment is actually on our blog at the Center for Family History at the International African American Museum. And you can find us, here's the URL down here. We can find us every day at cfh.iaamuseum.org. And I'd like to point out too, that at, you can come back and review this recording at any time and pause the recording if you need to write down URLs. But most of what we're going to talk about is actually included in these two articles. The first one is, did your ancestor serve in the United States Colored Troops? Here's how to find out. In this article, we tell you how to check to see if your ancestor served and what documentation to gather if you find that they did. And then we talk to you about how to order your file. And then there's a second article on the blog, and that is resources for documenting United States Colored Troops veterans. And here we go into a whole cognate of other databases that are available out there for documenting your USCT veteran ancestor. Um, most of the articles that, that uh, most of the databases that we will look at are actually free on family search. And you may be surprised at how many different free databases there are on family search that document your USCT veterans uh, military service. First of all, let's talk about where to find USCT pension files. And I'd like to say that um, on slides where we have a lot of links, because we only have a short time with you today, we're not going to go through every link, but you can go back through this recording and pause the, the uh, frame and you'll be able to see it, any of the URLs that you need. But you'll probably find most of them in those two articles that we referenced. So the first thing that we need to know is that the original records are held at the National Archives. Now, this is the United States National Archives. They're held on paper. That's the only place that they are held. Um, and we sometimes refer to the US National Archives as NARA. So if you see NARA in any one of these slides, we're referring to the United States National Archives. Now, there are other places, including our website, where there are full United States Colored Troops pension files that are digitized that you can read and download. But do know that the majority, the vast majority of the USCT pension files have not been digitized and are only available in paper form at the United States National Archives in Washington, DC. So let's talk about how to order a pension file from the US National Archives. The first thing you're going to want to do is go into this database, which is free on FamilySearch, United States General Index to Pension Files, 1861 to 1934. And you can search for the name of your USCT veteran ancestor and then you can view the results to narrow down. If, you, if your ancestor had a common name, you can view the results. You can uh, also refine your search by putting in a state, a time period, et cetera, in order to help you find that file. Now, what you're going to see is you're going to see an index card. 
And that index card, you want to download the image of that index card to your computer. And the reason you want to do that is all the information that you need in order to order that pension from the National Archives is contained on that one index card. So the next thing that you're going to want to do is go to the National Archives website and go to the Veteran Service Records page. And on there, you will find an order form. Now you can do two things. You can print that file out, fill it out and mail it in, or you can select to order online. Once you have the order form pulled up, then just look at the USCT pension file index card that you pulled off of FamilySearch and use the information on that card to fill out the order form. It generally takes about six to eight weeks for you to receive your file, although with the COVID-19 pandemic, it may be taking a little longer now, I don't know. Uh, but do be aware that the files can be costly. Um, currently their fee schedule is $80 for the first 100 pages of the file and then 75 cents per page thereafter. If your file is more than 100 pages, do be aware though that they will contact you to ask you if you would like to order the remaining pages. Um, you can choose for those first 100 pages of the file to choose only the pages that are genealogical interest. So there, they will select for you the pages that reveal the names of family members, reveal births, deaths, et cetera, that are important for family history. And Bernice, I know you have, um, you have a word to say about those first 100 uh, pages, don't you? Right, I want you to keep in mind that you will get a page that's copied front and back. Therefore, you may really have 50 pages that turn into be 100, but it's back and front, that's, that's what you'll get. That's correct, that's correct. So now you remember that really rich um, this, uh, testimony that Bernice showed you from 1902 uh, for Bram Strobler, where he revealed so much information about himself. He revealed his, his age, his occupation, he told you the name of his former enslaver. He told you the plantation that he was enslaved upon. Well, let's go through a little bit more of that deposition and see what else he had to say. Here he says, my father was Paul Strobard, dead. My mother was Louisa Strobard. They belong to my owner. My mother is also dead. So here he is telling you that both of his parents who lived and died during the period of enslavement were enslaved by his enslaver. And therefore, when you go to look in records of the enslaver to look for this family, you can now look for the family group, which will help you be more certain that you have identified the right people in those records. Then he says, I have four brothers, Tim, Prince, Abel, and Cain, all living. None live in Beaufort. Cain lives near Gillisonville. I have three sisters living, Jane, Emma, and Matilda. Emma lives at Gardner's Corner, 12 miles from here. Emma's husband is Toby Hamilton, a pensioner. Well, that statement right there tells us that Tony ha Toby Hamilton also served in the United States Colored Troops and filed for a pension and received that pension. And so if you order Toby Hamilton's pension file, you may learn a lot more about Emma, who was his wife, who was the sister of Bram. And it's possible that Bram even testified in Toby's pension file. And the lovely thing here that he's telling you that his, his brothers and sisters live elsewhere, he's telling you exactly where to go on the census to look for them. I love this. This is so rich. It is. And Toby, I mean, could have come right from the community. And what you may find is others that came directly from that community also. That's so true. And did you notice in this file, Bernice, where he named the names of several people who enlisted with him? Yes, I noticed that. I absolutely did. And what does that tell us? What does that tell us? That's a community. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You know, either they were neighbors or they were enslaved on the same plantation, but they knew each other and they enlisted together. That's right. 
Then he tells you, I cannot tell you whence my parents derived their names, but my grandfather was a strobard. He is telling you that three generations of his family had a surname before emancipation. If you ever hear people say, oh, enslaved people didn't have a last name until emancipation, I'll tell you, I have yet to, to read a pension file, and I've read thousands of pension files. I have yet to read one that where the soldier did not have a surname before emancipation. Yes, I, I the same. I have yet to read one where they did not have a surname and tell you where that surname came from. Absolutely. So I here he is. That. Yeah, so pardon me. Here he is. He's telling you uh, all about his family. And he's telling you about three generations of his family. Two of those generations lived and died during the period of enslavement. Now, this is one page, just four, like four paragraphs of one page of testimony in this 203 page pension file. And so when you get a large file, there is no telling what information you're going to find out about your ancestors' life before the war, during the war, after the war, and right up to the time of their death. Absolutely. Look at this testimony. This is actually testimony of Bram's former slaveholder. Bernice, what did you think when you saw this in this file? Well, it's consistent with what I've seen in other files, that they had a relationship with the former slaveholder or members of the family and could call on them to come back and testify on their behalf. Absolutely. And here's what he says. I have known Bram Strobard since he was a boy. He belonged to me before the war and ran off from my place and joined the service. Well, that's a little different than the story Bram told, isn't it, about how he enlisted in the service? It, it certainly is, because <laughs> Bram said Captain Randolph asked me if I wanted to join the service, and I said yes. That was right. He, he was in Buford, and Captain Randolph recruited him, but in the eyes of G.G. Martin, who was the former slaveholder, he ran off from his place and joined the service. Then he says he grew up a sound, healthy young man and had no trouble with his eyes so far as I know. So he, what he's saying here is he's offering evidence that Bram did indeed receive his injury and lose his eye in, during his military service, that he was healthy when he left the plantation. Right, which is consistent with Bram's statement that he was healthy. That's right. Now, before we go on to some other records that you can gather to, doc to uh, document your USCT veteran ancestor, I would like to give you one piece of advice that I learned the hard way. Before you search for other records, compile every single thing that you have learned from this pension file. And I say, do this first. It's fresh in your mind right then. Go through and record every new bit of information that you have learned from this file. Place that information into your ancestors' timeline, and you will be surprised at what you have gleaned from this one file. The now, other thing, Tony, is yes. that it should read every single page. Absolutely. Not skip a page. I know sometimes they will look and say, this is not of any value. Don't skip a page. You may be surprised what you'll find. You may lose one of the most important details that's in the whole file if you skip a page. That's absolutely true. So I just want to give you a look at uh, an excerpt from those two articles that are on our blog. I want to let you know how detailed they are so that um, uh, you'll know that you'll have all this information in there. For every database that we're going to talk about uh, going forward, you see here we talk about the, the database itself. We tell you what information that record set contains, and then we show you a, a document image so that you can see what the, what the document looks like and how the information is arranged. Now then, let's talk about researching from a USCT pension file. What's next? We're going to offer five suggestions for you today. The first we're going to suggest is that you gather the Civil War service record. The second thing that we will suggest is that you search Freedman's bank records because these records really do a lot to corroborate the information in a USCP pension file and sometimes reveal much more. We're also going to suggest that you search Freedman's Bureau records for mention of your ancestor. 
Then we're going to talk about the other records that are related to Civil War veterans. And then finally, our final advice is to follow the research clues from all of those records that you have gathered. So let's talk about step number one, gather the Civil War service record. The fastest way and most complete way to view the um, your Civil War service record is to go to the Civil War Soldiers and Sailors database, which is hosted by the National Park Service. And uh, there you will find the name of the veteran, any alternate names, whether they served uh, in the Union or Confederate service, and it will give their company and regiment. And this is what that site looks like. Uh, soldiers and Sailors database. And I just wanted to point out one additional thing to you too. You can scroll down that homepage and see here where it says regiments. You can click on that and you can search for the regiment that your ancestors served in. And look at this, it gives the complete history of that regiment. And this is the regiment that Brand served in 33rd. And it tells you when it was formed. And then look at this, it tells you every duty station they had throughout the war until they were mustered out. So when you learn the history of that regiment, you can begin to envision your ancestors experience of the Civil War. When I look for a Civil War service record, there is one page that I usually go to first because it, is, it gives you so much information and that is the company descriptive book. And look how much information is on here about Bram. Now this was filled out at the time that he enlisted. So we see that he was 20 years old. Here's a physical description of him. Here is where he was born, Pocatalico. Now he told us that he was enslaved to Pocatalico. Here we're learning that he was born there. His occupation on the plantation before he joined the service was laborer and he enlisted October 26 in Beaufort, South Carolina. Step two, search for a Freedman's Bank record. Now the fastest way and best way to find the Freedman's Bank record is simply to go to discoverfreedmen.org. There you can search by name and the results will roll you over to Family Search. And once you get over to Family Search, that's where you can refine your search, put in a location, et cetera, in order to uh, more quickly identify the record for your ancestor. And let's look at a Freedman's Bank record. Look at all the information this doggone thing asks for. Where were you born? Where were you brought up? Where do you live? What's your age? They give a physical description again. What's your occupation? Who do you work for? Are you single or married? Who's your wife? Who are your children? Who's your father? Who's your mother? Who are your brothers and sisters? Are they living or dead? And then look at this. You see where it says C33? Well, usually when a veteran applied for a Freedman's Bank account, their service was noted on that bank record. And if you didn't know that your ancestors served, sometimes this can be the first clue that your ancestor served. It, this says that he served in Company C of Regiment 33. Now, this is where the Freedman's Bank records really interplay with that pension file. Let's compare the earlier record from the Freedman's Bank to Bram's testimony in 1902. Normally you'll get an exact date for when this Freedman's Bank account was open, but on this one, we didn't. So, but we know that it was made between 1868 and 1872. So let's look at what he says here. He says his father was Paul and his mother Louisa was dead. Well, you will recall in his 1902 testimony, both of his parents were deceased. So this means that sometime between the period of him opening this account and 1902, his father passed away, but that means you may find records for his father. You may find his father in the 1870 census. You may find a Freedman's Bank record for his father. You may find Freedman's Bureau records for his father. So then he goes on here, look how many brothers and sisters he lists in this earlier um, Freedman's Bank record. Tim, Abel, Cain, Prince, Dick, and William will look down here. By 1902, he lists only the brothers and sisters who are living. Tim, Abel, Cain, and Prince. And then look how many sisters 
he lists here. Once again, in 1902, he lists only three because those were the ones who, sur who surviving. Do you see how these records play together and actually complement one another? They can help you fill out your family group sheet um, when you're working from the pension file, working back in time to the Freedmen's Bank record. The third thing we suggest to you is that you search for Freedmen's Bureau records. So often, United States Colored Troops veterans also interacted with the Freedmen's Bureau. And some of those Freedmen's Bureau officers were actually their former officers in the military um, because the agents who were appointed were, were often the officers who served in that location during the occupation by Union forces. The fastest way to find Freedmen's Bureau records is once again, go to discoverfreedmen.org and there you can search by name. The results will take you to family search and you can uh, then further refine your search. And by the way, this is a picture of Sergeant William Carney who won the Congressional Medal of Honor for his USCT service. So here's what discoverfreedmen.org looks like. And you remember how Bram's name was spelled so many different ways. His last name, you had Strobert, you had Strobard, you had Strobord. So what we did was we typed in a wildcard search and we searched for Bram and then S-T-R-O-B asterisk. And that's going to return every last name that starts with S-T-R-O-B. And let's look at what we found. We found one for Bram Strobert, we found another for Bram Strobeck. And then after additional research, we were able to see that this was indeed a record for Bram. Step number four, search for other records related to Civil War veterans. And that's that second article that I showed you that's on our blog. There are so many free collections on family search that will document your United States Colored Troops veteran throughout different stages of their life. Here's an 1890 census of union veterans. Here, if they corresponded with the, better, with the pension office, you'll see that. Here are uh, records of payment of that pension. And later in life, if your veteran ancestor was disabled and went to live in a national home for disabled soldiers, you're going to find hospital records there and you're going to learn about their final illness and the cause of their death perhaps. Here is a database for headstone applications for the veteran. Now this is who a place, gonna tell you who applied for the headstone and it tells you their address. It tells you what their relationship is to the veteran. So see, you're finding out about him after his death in this database. Now here is another database, records of headstones of deceased union veterans. This tells you who received the headstone. It also tells you where the veteran is buried. So if you didn't know where your USN, uh, USCT ancestor was buried, this record of headstones will give you that information. And then we'd just like to point out that there are more collections on Fold 3 and Ancestry for you to access for documenting your USCT veteran ancestors. And then finally, follow the clues that you have gathered from all these records. Take all, every single record that you have gathered, place that information into your ancestors' timeline. Record that information in your research log, every new thing that you learn. Form new research questions from the new information that you learned and form yourself a to-do list to take you forward in your research. And Bernice, what else should we say about these records? Well, one of the things when you order a file, understand that it may not be chronotic in the uh, order of which you want them to be, which yes. means <laughs> review the file and put it in the correct order. Absolutely, absolutely. And so friends, we would like to thank you for attending both parts of our session today. And we now invite you to add your comments, feedback and questions to the chat portion for this session. And as Bernice told you earlier, we will go in there and interact with you. Uh, we appreciate your comments and feedback. And of course, we will answer your questions. Um, so thank you so much. And Bernice, I thank you as well. Thank you, Tony. Goodbye, Jen, friends. Enjoy the rest of Roots Tech Connect. Check out those other African-American genealogy presentations.